Hey everybody, I'm Zelda Master, and welcome to Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. It honestly feels surreal saying that, and to be looking at this title screen reimagined in HD. As for those who don't know, Xenoblade Chronicles is my second favorite game of all time, right after Breath of the Wild, hence why I always had the Minato along with the Master Sword in my channel logo. And there's actually a connection between these two, as the company behind Xenoblade, Monolith Soft, actually helped work on Breath of the Wild. And let me say they will both really show in the game's worlds. Both of them have absolutely massive and immersive worlds to explore that I cannot wait to get into. And it's crazy to think we almost never got this game outside of Japan. As Nintendo didn't even want to bother localizing this game for other countries, assuming it would do badly. But boy, they were wrong. And thanks to Operation Rainfall, we managed to get this game along with two other JRPGs released for the Wii. And now, 10 years later, here we are, re-experiencing the game that started it all in HD. So I think without further ado, it's finally time to play this game how it was meant to be. Let's play Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Long ago, the world was nothing more than an endless sea, cloaked in a boundless sky, reaching as far as could possibly be imagined. Then two great titans came into existence. Titans were locked in a timeless battle. Until at last, only their lifeless corpses remained. Eons have passed. Now, our world, this vast land stretching across the remains of the Bionis, is under attack from a relentless force known as the Mekon. Advancing down our weak right flank. For a bunch of soulless machines, they seem to know a thing or two. But we'll see. Young man. We've been given the order to retreat. We're pulling back the line to Colony 6. That's where we'll set up the last line of defense. Yeah. That's a good idea. Any more time spent hanging around here, and we're done for. Count me in. We gotta get out of here. Or we can stay and fight. What? Ah! 
We may die if we take a stand here, but staying gives us the chance to change our destinies. We have the Monado. With this, the future is ours for the taking. Stupid beast! Your body can't take any more of the Monado. I can tell by just looking at you. Getting short-sighted in your old age, Dixon. I'm fine. Don't worry, I'm still in control. Hmm. I should have known I couldn't talk sense into a beast. Let's do this. I'm going with you. You'll need someone to drag your corpse off. As long as you think you've still got the strength in you, old man. Oi, you two! We've been ordered to pull back! I'm leaving! Well, I say you're coming with us. What would we do without those? <sighs> the enemy's second wave is approaching! It's now or never, Dunban. Let's show them what we've got. We'll give them a warm Homs welcome. Acknowledged. Yeah! Huh. What are they trying to prove? I'm not throwing my life away! No point dying in some godforsaken field! Nothing for it. I'll have to use Dunban as a decoy. Yeah, that should give me time to escape! <laughs> Alright, and so we begin in the thick of it, in the middle of a great war, playing as Dunban with the blada tutorials that I'm gonna skip because I can just explain it myself. So yes, let's begin by targeting on the enemy and attacking it. So far I'm only dealing auto attacks, which are attacks you automatically do, hence the name. Um, you just need to be close enough to the target to land them, and now we can use our special arts and bash all the enemies in sight as it does an AoE attack. Pretty badass, the Monado looks so sick, I mean it's pretty much like a lightsaber-like weapon. Kind of fits against the battle versus these Mechon, we need something that will literally cut through their metal, but I feel like both of my allies don't really have much of an advantage. I mean, we're against these metal creatures using melee weapons while they're using guns and lasers and whatnot, but Whatever, we're doing pretty well so far, and now we're against this Mechon M82, as yes, the Homs, which are essentially the humans, are trying to win this battle because they're literally getting slaughtered by these evil creatures. It's pretty much, you know, man versus machine. Who will win? Well, we humans, or Homs, have the power of the Monado, so take that. You've got to be kidding! It's their main force. Looks like the Mechon are hell-bent on taking us out. They'll have to be if they want to beat us. Now, let's even the odds a bit. You heard him. Dixon, Munka, let's do this! It ain't funny. Looks like this is it. At least we know our luck can't get any worse from here. Dumban! Dixon, take care of the survivors. Dumban, what are you playing at? <sighs> Those idiots. I'll just come and get the Monado when everything's quiet down a bit. That thing's gonna be mine! <laughs> Uh, 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 
Oh, oh no, please! No! Vile Beckham. If you think the Homs, the people of Bionis, are just waiting here for you to pick us off, you are sorely mistaken! A Mechon M71? I bet I can use its optical system to align one of the anti-air batteries. Oh, no good. It's broken. The joint section... It's buckled. It's completely useless! Ugh. An M69! <sighs> its armor would be perfect for making a shield. If I can just get it off, I should be able to... Ah! Ah! <sighs> Shulk! Ah! Ryan! It's not a mechon. It's just a crabble. It was using the Mechon armor as a shell. I'll lure it away and topple it. When it's down, use your arts to finish it off. All right, so right off into things once again, playing as Shulk this time, an entire year after the Great War, where Shulk is pretty much just looting for the scraps that are left over from the, you know, great battle that happened one year ago and yeah now we're facing this crabble that happened to use some of the mechon's machinery as a shell so let's go ahead and kill it all we need to do is auto attack and uh, we do have some arts as well i'm gonna go ahead and use a special art that does build up over time uh pretty much all your arts do some of them from auto attacks some from using other arts but there we go me managed to kill that enemy and uh there's a green border around us yes we can't actually escape yet as we have to take on this enemy as well it's blocking the way so let's go ahead and backslash it and uh, that gives us more tutorials and also gives us an achievement called the backstabber yes because uh dealing a backslash on the enemy's actual back deals more damage so I was able to um, easily do that just by positioning myself and voila thanks Ryan that was a close one man what were you doing wandering off by yourself stay where I can keep an eye on you it's pretty dangerous outside of the colony there are all kinds of monsters yeah but thanks to you we got it shell everyone in the colony is gonna be really happy I'm more worried about you than the shell no, oh, whatever. Knowing what you're like, at least you'll make a decent weapon out of it. This scrap driver's excellent. I just learned by watching Dixon make weapons. Of course, Dunban's weapon still beats them all. The Monado. I hope I can figure out the secret of his power one day. You will, Shulk. Anyway, we better get back to the colony. If I'm late for drills again, old Square Tash is gonna kill me. Square Tash? Oh, the Defense Force Colonel. He's pretty scary. Tell me about it. Sorry, I didn't mean for you to come all the way out here during your break. Don't worry about it. Let's get back. All right, now our adventure truly begins, sorta. We do have a lot of story, as with most RPGs when they start out, 
there is a lot of cutscenes in the beginning and I'm gonna try to focus on getting through that here in the first episode and then we'll move on to doing quests and whatnot but yes we are playing a shulk in Xenoblade Chronicles definitive edition this is actually my first time ever playing this remake and I am so hyped I'm just gonna spam jumping the hut you know this is a staple from when I would play the original I would just jump around because the world is so huge but I'm gonna stop because uh, it, it gets kind of annoying just hearing Shalak go hot I mean you're gonna hear a lot of the same phrases grunts and things so many times because this game is so vast and the characters are only given so many lines to say that yeah but wow this seriously looks so good for the remake as the original definitely seems outdated even when it first came out you could tell that they were really limited trying to put such a massive game on the Wii and now that we have it on the switch I do believe it will be exactly how Monolith Soft envisioned it I mean they give us breath of the wild and it's massive world so this one it is pretty massive as well and we're gonna witness it as we continue on here in Colony 9. As you can see, you can actually see the Bionis and it has a little glowing thing on like its ankle. That's actually where we're standing. This is where Colony 9 is located. Cause yes, we do live on the Bionis as it's pretty much the continent of the Homs. Here we are. I better stop in at HQ. You off to the weapon development lab? Yeah, when I've sold any parts I can't use. All right. See you later. All right, peace, Ryan. Uh, I guess let's go ahead and just make our way straight to the lab. That's what Shulk wants to do. He's kind of a nerd. I, I can kind of relate to him. I can relate to him in many ways, actually. I mean, he does remind me of Link as well. Not his character whatsoever. Just the fact that they're both blonde boys destined for greatness with a blade of magical power that they need. Uh, yeah, the similarities are quite there in that regard. But other than that, uh, Shulk actually has a character. You know, he talks, he shows personality, and uh, yeah, you're going to get to know a lot more of him as we continue through the game. So as you can see, I'm actually getting EXP just from discovering new landmarks, which here in Colony 9, I'm able just to kind of walk around and get new areas on the map. And it is so nice because the game actually rewards you for exploring. And that's something I really enjoy in video games, exploring. So I cannot wait to explore this game, reimagine. Like, look how beautiful everything looks, wow. Okay, but like I said, I'm not going to waste any time. I want to take the game in. I want to explore. I want to run around. But like I said, a lot of cutscenes ahead of us. So let's get through those. And then once the game opens up a bit more, we will get into the other things. So yeah, we're at the fortress entrance and that's where we need to be. What the hell are you playing at? Uh-oh. The colonel's gonna explode. Crashing the mobile artillery into a house. How long have you been in the force? Sorry, sir. It's just that we were trying to go as fast as we could, like you ordered. But it's impossible to get back to the military district in only 40 seconds. I don't want any excuses. Champions don't whine. They win. Yes, sir. You're a disgrace to the uniform. Are you forgetting the shame you brought on this force during joint maneuvers with Colony 6? Stick your back into it, maggots! Move it! Yes, sir. Get the artillery back to the military district double time! Then I want a million press-ups from both of you, and you better not stop until your biceps explode! Colonel, we can't move the artillery. What? You better give a damn good reason why. Sir, the impact of the crash damaged the ether conduction cable. The ether fuel proceeded to leak out, and now the cylinder is empty. Well, change the cylinder then. Can't you even do something as simple as that? The auxiliary cylinders have all been used up. It'll be three days until more come in, sir. I told you to keep a stock of fuel in reserve. Sorry, sir. You're nothing but slackers! 
Same old colonel. At this rate, the men will all be dead before they see any action. Okay, I have to say, their colonel is really rude. I don't even know how they learn from him. Uh, like, that is hella brutal. Luckily, Sherlock doesn't have to deal with that. He's just a nerd studying, not doing any of the heavy work. And speaking of which, let's check out the Monado. All right, Shulk. How are you? Dixon! When did you get back to Colony 9? <laughs> Just now. I see you've been busy. Looks like your Monado research has been going well. I made the right choice leaving you in charge. <laughs> your research notes really helped. So, you can activate it now, then. Well, anyone can activate it. The problem is controlling it. Yeah, for everyone except him. Yes. If anyone other than Dunban were able to control the Monado, we could surpass any military force in the world. You think so? What are these hidden functions you mention? It's still only conjecture. But it's starting to look like the Monado might be something far more significant than just a weapon for defeating Mekon. I see. And the evidence to support your theory? It's the symbol that appears in the center when it's activated. What I know is, the central piece is made from multi-layered glass. The symbol appears on the top layer, and each layer is constructed differently. So it's possible that other symbols could appear on different layers. Which means... The Monado might conceal even more power. Am I right? If we could just... unlock the Monado's power. Dunban! Dunban! Prioritize the most civilian to... Come on, get a move on! Dunban! Don't look like that. I haven't come yet. Supplies delivered to the defense force. I'll drop round the HQ and see how they're getting on. Okay then. I'll see you later. Shulk, you're spending too much time in the lab. Either that or rummaging for junk in the scrapyard. It ain't healthy for a kid your age. That's why you're always looking so pasty. You should get out and get some fresh air once in a while. All right, I'm off. <laughs> Is it time to eat already? You didn't have to bring it yourself. You could have just called me. Don't be silly. Do you want me to feed you? <laughs> Don't treat me like an invalid. I'm better than I was a year ago. Much better. I really thought I lost you back then. 
Yes, but now I'm almost well enough to handle the Monado again. Dumban, don't say that. The Meccan have gone now. Oh, why would you say that? I just mean I'm prepared. Sorry. Okay. More importantly, eat up before it gets cold. I made something really special today. Don't feel like you need to stay here then, Fiora. Go and make your next delivery. Huh? Well, I'm sure you'd like Shulk to try some while it's still hot. That's okay. Shulk has no sense of taste. He'll say it's delicious even if it's stone cold. <laughs> In which case, today he would actually mean it. Hmm, maybe. I'm fine, Fiora. Off you go. Okay. Dumban, thanks. Finished yet. I have to be prepared to use the Monado again. Okay, now we're playing as Fiora, one of Shulk's good friends, along with Marine and Dunben. And she actually made food for Shulk that Dunben wants us to deliver. She doesn't really care because, according to her, Shulk doesn't really you know, notice good tasting food or whatsoever. And as you can notice, Dunben, yes, his arm is destroyed from the war that happened one year ago. Uh, you know, pretty much destroying his arm because he wielded the Minato. But let's go ahead and leave his house. Hey, Fiora. Dixon. Looks like you're in a hurry. Where are you off to? I just thought I'd take Shulk some food. I'm on my way to the lab. Shulk's not there right now. Really? I just sent him out to get some fresh air. You know where he'll have gone. Outlet Park. That's the one. Okay. Thanks, Dixon. Okay, so yeah, Shulk is actually out for once, you know? He, he isn't, you know, cooped up just studying or, you know, doing whatever he does as I like how the game implies he's not really an outdoors person. Something I actually can relate to it as said, so I'm sure a lot of you guys can. You know, we, we prefer to play games. I'd rather experience the outdoors in a video game like now. You know, <laughs> right now I'm walking through a nice grassy field. It, it looks beautiful, or rather a trail that is taking us to where we need to go. And that is the park, as it Shulk happens to be there. Fiora and Shulk definitely are close friends, if you couldn't already tell just from how she, you know, is treating Shulk in a sense of like talking about him. Um, she seems to know him really well, even though she seems a bit disappointed with how Shulk acts. Uh, they are definitely good friends and we're gonna get to know a lot more about them as we move along. But yes, uh, a lot of traveling. Uh, there's actually an auto run feature. It's kind of like the world of an MMO. It's pretty nice, but okay. I do believe this upcoming cutscene where Shulk is, is a pretty notorious cutscene that I really want to see if anything changes in it in this definitive edition. The Monado. It's the only sword that's effective against the Mechon armor. They say that before time began, it was wielded by the Bionis. The same Bionis that we all live on. It must have a secret. That's how Dunban was able to destroy so many Mechon. And why he lost the use of his right arm. If I can just unlock the secret of its power. Shulk! Fiora! Mm. This is great. It tastes so good. Really? It's amazing. Oh, Shulk. You say that every day. Not quite. Mm. It's always delicious. But today, it's amazing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. I used some special herbs and spices today. So if you said it was just the same as usual, I'd know for sure you had no sense of taste. What? Oh, nothing. Oh, 
the breeze feels so good. Yeah. I'd forgotten what it feels like. I never thought it could be so quiet here. You're spending too much time with Ryan. You're getting used to all the noise he makes. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> So peaceful. You know, Shulk, I hope every day can be like this always. Huh? <gasps> the debris siren. Strange. There hasn't been much falling lately. might be more on the way. The anti-air batteries can't protect us out here. Let's get back to the lab. Okay. So yeah, there we go. As you notice, Shulk didn't actually bite the sandwich. That was something I feel like not only me, but a lot of fans were curious. And okay, more tutorials, I don't really care. But I do believe that, yeah, we can actually, uh, you know, swap the party. Uh, have Shulk as the leader if you don't want to play as Fiora now that Shulk is back with us And I love how they have little idle animations kind of reminds me of Kingdom Hearts 3's menu But um, yeah, there we go. And it's also a heart to heart. Okay, let's quickly uh, Check this out because this is pretty important There are certain of these that you want to view and some of them you can only view at certain times You might miss out on it So we're gonna immediately check it out as it's something to do with Shulk and Fiora and it's not voice acted So hey Shulk you remember that time we watched the sunrise right here? It was when we were quite young. Yeah, I remember. We came because... Now this is where you actually have to answer, and the right answer you give will either raise your affinity or nothing will happen, or it might not raise too much. So you want to make sure you say the right thing. Shulk would never invite Fiora. He's too clueless. He's not really the ladies' man. So it'd be you and Dunbin, and as you can see, hearts appear. So you had a big falling out. And, uh, yeah, pretty much you just want to make sure what's what you reply is the right way. So, yeah, it wasn't pretty, really. It had nothing to do with you, but I still dragged you out and made you stay up all night. I'm glad we did it, even though it was only that one time. We talked for hours and hours about all our hopes and dreams, and then you fell asleep on my arm as we looked up at the stars. Oh, that sounds kind of romantic. Oh, no! What? What was it? Oh, Shulk. I have a terrible feeling that I said something really embarrassing. Like I wanted to get married. Um, Shell, don't you remember what I said back then? So, I doubt she actually said you wanted to go fishing, so we're just gonna say kind of. That's the best response, as saying otherwise would make it obvious we weren't paying attention. So I can't quite put my finger on it. Hold on, I know I'll get it. <laughs> oh, Eric, don't worry. I don't even think she wants Shulk to remember. No need to remember. Forget I even brought it up. Anyway, that's the end of that conversation. Okay. Let's talk about something else. Okay, whatever you say, Fiora. I love how cool Shulk is. Yes, I think I pulled it off. He didn't suspect a thing. So clearly this does mean something to Fiora. I hope he remembers one day. But for now, it's just a bit too embarrassing. Yeah, clearly it seems like Fiora is showing a lot of affection for Shulk. And Shulk is that typical anime protagonist who just can't seem to get a clue. That That's essentially what they're getting at here. Uh, it happens in a lot of games and anime. I usually anime because I feel like that's the... the uh, where you see it most. But yeah, it is a trope that you always see where, uh, you know, all of these great women are into the main guy and then they just for some reason can't notice. But speaking uh, of which, let's go ahead and, you know, group up together and battle this little bunnet. I, I feel bad for it. It stood no chance as Fiora and Shulk just, you know, diced it through. But okay, so... Yeah, with that done, let's just go ahead and make our way to our destination. As you can see, we're pretty much heading back to the lab after Shulk has had his little lunch with Fiora. And as you can see, I can auto-run. There we go. I want to try it, but you can actually control your direction when you do auto-run. I do think it's a cool feature. I'm not going to lie. This whole world is like a giant MMO in a sense of how vast it is, but it's actually just a single-player game. 
Uh, it's insane. It feels like an MMO with how big it is. Like, it could fit so many players uh, comfortably in this one world. But, you know, it's all meant for you and you alone in this massive single-player experience. It's truly amazing. And as you can see, we're getting more EXP for just uh, running along and discovering these new landmarks. And, yeah, I, I can't wait to discover every nook and cranny of this Bionis, the world that we live on. The fact that we do live on a giant titan is so amazing and you're gonna see how it works and the way just the scale of this thing truly is because think about it we haven't even scratched the surface and let alone just colony 9 is so huge but anyways we're back at the central plaza we are making our way to where we need to go which is uh you know pretty much just back to the lab with chalk and uh yeah we're gonna see what happens next but yeah, I, I can't get over just how absolutely huge this is, and I cannot wait to explore everything with you guys. Now, there are a lot of quests, as you can see, this exclamation mark on this character here. I'm going to ignore him. Uh, I believe there's also a Nopon, which, you know, along with the Homs, they, you know, reside on this giant titan. But I'm going to ignore all of that, make my way here, and continue on with the story. Ryan? Ryan? What are you doing? Sh Shulk! Uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just... Don't you care about me? I could have died! You're not hurt, are you? The Monado can't cut people. More importantly, what were you thinking, Ryan? Sorry, I, I came to ask a favor, but you weren't here. And I saw the Monado and... I know I'm here a lot, but even I need fresh air sometimes. Is your body still feeling numb? We have to be very careful with the Monado. It's not a toy. I know, man. I just wanted to touch it. Didn't know it would do that. Sorry. But is it true? The Monado really can't cut people. The pattern in that circle. Or maybe it's a symbol. I think it shows which power the Monado has at the moment. You think it's a symbol? Well... If I can find a way to increase the number of symbols, I should. I'm sure that's all very clever. But why were you more worried about a machine than me, Shulk? Well, I just... I just explained why. That's not the point! Uh, s sorry. this happened there Ryan Fiora are you okay does it hurt no Ryan when you held the Monado did you see anything you know like a blue blade made of light came out same as just now I don't mean that a feeling like time had stopped and then time had stopped so was it only me who saw that? That sounds strange. Is it another Monado thing? Who knows? Anyway, no matter how good a sword it is, that's what happens when you hold it. Looks like Dunban really is the only one who can use it. 
I won't let my brother use it ever again. Not after what it did to him. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean it like that. Anyway, the point is I'm fine. To be honest, this has happened a few times before. I've been researching the Monado for a long time. Shulk, don't act as if this is nothing. Look, don't worry about it. Anyway, Ryan, what did you want to ask me about? Oh, yeah, uh, old Square Tash is gonna put me on punishment duty. Fancy tagging along? Punishment? The Colonel was pretty angry today. Did he hit you? Well, whether he hit me is neither here nor there, really. Although, actually, he did end up hitting me. And that ain't all. He made me do a thousand squats and sit-ups. Whoa, nasty. Yeah, and now I have to go all the way to the Magmel ruins and back. So you have to go and collect the ether cylinders? That's the one. They're used to power the mobile artillery. Looks like the damage has been repaired. They can't move without the ether energy. And it seems like the fueling station's all out of stock. Is the mobile artillery that big machine that crashed in the residential district? Yeah, probably. You know your way around there, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll go with you. Yeah, knew you would. Hold on. The Magmel ruins are in Tefra Cave, right? I heard that there's a male lizard nest there. I couldn't take it if anything happened to Shulk. He's delicate. Not like you, Ryan. What are you on about? I'll be fine. I can take care of myself. But... Okay, I got it. I'll make you a promise. Shulk won't even get a scratch. A promise doesn't mean much coming from you. <laughs> she don't trust me at all. Nah, she doesn't mean it. Alright, I don't really think Fiora trusts Shulk either, because, I mean, she just assumes Shulk is going to be so clumsy joining Ryan and, you know, that Ryan has to protect us. I could protect myself. Uh, yeah, even though Ryan is a big buff boy, he, he's rather clumsy if you ask me. So, anyways, uh, yeah, I guess next time get ready for some Ryan time as, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're going to continue on, help Ryan with his quest, do some side questing as well, and overall explore the world of Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. As you noticed, Shulk had had a vision seeing into the future, and those are things we're hopefully going to witness together as we continue through the future of this game. I am beyond excited to be Let's Playing this, and I hope you guys are excited as well. Be sure to leave a like if so, and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's